All right, I've got mine base coated with two coats of the golden straw, and I've got it dry. Now I'm going to use some extender. Um, I just take my extender so that I don't have it running all over my palette, and I just dump it into a little container so that I can just dip into it as I need. Extender will, um, it does what it says, it extends. Extends the drying time of your paint. Gives you more time to work it, especially if you're wanting to blend something or make a, a special effect in your background. Um, and that's what we're going to do on this. So I'm just going to dip into my extender and cover the surface with it. You don't want it soupy on here, you just want it to where it's covered. Okay, and I'm going to go into my golden straw and just put a, a quick coat of that on here. Nothing heavy. I'm going to dip into my evergreen. We're going to put some dabs of evergreen on here. Just little dabs, like little polka dots. I'm going to wipe the paint out of my brush onto my paper towel. I'm going to come back on the handle, back here on the handle, with my brush straight up and down, and I'm just going to swipe it back and forth in little X movements and just kind of create a modeled effect in that background with this green. Just It's just a gentle touch. You don't want to over blend it and get rid of all your green. I'm going to have to put a little bit more in there. I have to be a little bit more modeled. And you just get it to where you like it. Remember, it's a light touch, kind of a slip slap X. And if you have pets like I do, you're liable to have their hair in it. Okay, now on my instructions, I said use dragon fruit. Now, this is dragon fruit, it's a pretty bright color. Pretty bright. But coral blush, we're going to be using on the candles. So you can use either one. On my original one, I used dragon fruit. On my other place uh, toasters, I used um, coral blush. So you can play around with it on some scrap paper and see which one you like the best. But it's just going to give it that little touch of pink in there in the background to kind of go with our red candles. Okay, so we've just created just a little marble effect on that coaster. Okay, we've got to let it dry completely. We're going to transfer the pattern and we're going to paint in our candles with country red. And then we are going to put our graphite lines in there to separate our candles and put our wax on there. And then we're going to start from there. So you go get yours base coated, let them dry, get your pattern, your candles only, put on there. Paint them red, country red, and then put your detail lines on the candles. And we'll start from there. Okay, we're going to start shading on our candles. We're going to use antique maroon. You can use an angle brush or a flat brush, whichever you can, uh, whichever you like the best. Um, I love these brushes. These are the curved flat brushes, and uh, they are wonderful brushes for floating, especially for people who have difficulty in floating. I think there's two. Um, issues that people have with floating and one is that their float is too dark so that means they don't have enough water in their brush and too much paint and they haven't worked it to soften it yet and um, 
The other is they put too much pressure. When you're floating, you want to use light pressure because that gives you the softest, most beautiful floats. So I'm going to use the 10. I have a 6, a 10, and a 12 here. I'm going to use the 10. Uh, you can use a smaller size. I, I prefer to use a bigger size when I'm floating. I just feel like it gives me more control. I'm going to take on my palette here, and I'm going to spray some, some water on here. So I have water drops to soak up as I float. That's very important for you to have that water handy right there. Okay, so when we load this brush, I've dampened it in water. We're gonna, we can pick up some water here on our palette if we need it. Okay, we're going to go to the antique maroon and put the toe of it in there. And we're going to work it into the brush. I need more water. I can tell because my paint is not softening. It's not flowing nicely on my brush. It's not working well. I don't want it to be hard, hard lines. That's got a little bit too much water in it, so I'm just going to gently squeeze, gently squeeze that and remove some of the excess. And you see how soft it's getting right here? That's how soft it will be on your piece. Okay? So as I continue doing this, I get less and less pressure so I can keep it soft on that toe. Okay? So then we just want to come over here get you back in frame here and we're going to go up each side of the candle have near enough paint now I think I talked mine dry okay. we're going to go up the side of the candle I'm doing soft pressure another thing that you want to have handy when you are floating is a mop brush I like to use the white ones because then I can tell when they're dirty. And you just mop into the water area where you just painted because the water's going to be on the heel part, this curved part. And you just want to mop that. And then you can go over, if you have a wet spot on your paper towel, you can take this and clean it in that wet spot to get the paint off that you just mopped and then dry it in a dry spot and it's good to go. If you wash out your mop brush, you'll have to get a new one because they take quite a while to dry. Okay, I'm sure I've talked that brush dry again, so let me go get some more water. Load this back up, and we're going to continue on here shading our candles. We're going to do all the outside edges. Mop it. Soften it. Keep it this way because I need to do this side. I'm going to walk it out a little bit because that candle in the front is going to be shading those smaller candles. I'm sorry if this is making you dizzy, me turning it. I have a painter's buddy that I love to use when I'm painting because it has a, a wheel on it that turns and I might try that out for the next project. Okay, now I'm going to do like a what they call a back-to-back -back float. So I want some water. This this bigger candle, I want my float to be a little bit come over into it a little bit more. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint on my brush. Back-to-back -back float is where you have a float on this side, and you're going to put a float right next to it on the other side so they're back to back you don't want to overlap them but you want to get close and then I'm just going to walk that out and then gently mop it okay. now I'm going to do this side the other side Load it up with some soft paint, a little bit more water because you're covering a larger area. Too much water. Oh, 
little bit more paint. I've got too much water here. That's going to not make my float as nice as I would like it to be. Tap that out. Soften that. Looking good. We're going to go along the bottom as well. You probably won't see a lot of this because we'll have our greenery down here, but just in case it peeks through, we're going to go ahead and put some down. I'm trying to stay out of that. That's wet right there. You don't want to cut across a float because it will just remove it and you'll have to do it all over again. Okay, now we're going to go up into under on the melted wax part. And here I am going to go to the smaller brush. And I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it better. I don't know how well you can see my pattern lines on there, but bear with me. This is my first DVD and I'm excited about it, excited about my website, and I hope you're going to keep coming back and checking out. I'm going to keep growing it and adding new things to it. Right now it's, it's in the early stages. I'm terrified and excited about starting this endeavor in my later life. Okay, here we go. We're loading this up. Too much water. I've got too much water. So I'm going to go down here into a new place. I just want it on the toe. Do need a little bit of water in there because I want it to be soft. A little bit more. I'm picking up the teeny tiny water drops over there, not not the great big ones, because this is a little brush. We don't need all that paint, all that water in here. Okay. Now we're just going to go around the hole. I still have too much water. I'm going to go back and get some more paint. We're just going to go around this whole thing. I'm hardly using any pressure. It's almost as if I'm lining it with a liner, but because my brush has that water on it, it's keeping it soft and not a hard line like lining it would do. And because this brush is so small, it doesn't carry the paint as far as a bigger brush. So I'm constantly going back and loading in that same spot where I first loaded it. Okay, so now we're getting that melted wax look on there. Okay, I'm going to go back and in these places right here where it goes back up, those are going to be the darkest areas. So I'm going to go back with pretty much some straight paint on the toe. Load it just like you did earlier, although you don't, you don't need water because we're just going to make those little indentions right there a little bit darker. Create a little darker shadow. And you're just kind of pushing that toe right up in there and letting that paint come off right there in that dark area. Can you see that? Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to make sure that my paint is dry. <clears throat> and then you can take a white eraser. You can zoom you out here. That eraser doesn't look like a ginormous. Uh, this is a white eraser. I have 
this white eraser that you can just buy at Walmart. This I bought at an art supply store and they sell refills so when the um, eraser gets when it gets down to here it just pops apart and you can refill it but you can keep the piece that's down in there that's too small to use in this anymore and you can still use it and it folds back in there nicely and then I have this one uh, it's a Pentel tri eraser I bought this from Patricia Rawlinson off of her website um, it comes out like a pen it's three sided which is nice you can use your scissors to cut the end of it and get really sharp fine points to erase so I just want to erase my graphite lines here on my wax so they won't be so distracting to me okay We're going to start highlighting now. We're going to highlight with coral blush. Have some on my palette here. We're going to use. I'm using the the tin curve flat. You can use a three eighths or a quarter inch angle. You can use a excuse me a number eight flat. Um, you can use the six curved flat if you want. I prefer to use a bigger brush. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to start on the lower part of these wax drips. And highlight them with this. Now this will dry down pretty softly. Use your finger to mop if you need to. Okay. We're also going to do across the top of each one. turn this this way. It's probably going to look upside down or crooked to you. I have my camera behind me over my left shoulder so I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera and also keep this where you can it's a good angle for you to see it. Alright, <clears throat> that's our first float. Now I want to do a second float. I want to try the dragon fruit. Now in the instructions, um, I did not say to use the dragon fruit. It's a brighter pink. I'm not sure I'm going to like it. But I believe that I used it on my original piece. So I want to try it here on this coaster. On this coaster that I painted, I did not use the dragon fruit. But I want to try it on this one, see how it looks. Because I know I'm going to have to do a second float anyway, so I'm going to try and see how this dragon fruit looks. It may make it too pink. I might not like it. That's pretty pink. Pretty pink. I don't think I'm going to like that. So I'm just going to do a second float with the coral blush. I did not list dragon fruit on the, the um, listings of paints. But on my instructions, I did put that if you would like to add dragon fruit in the background, you could. But since you've already got the coral blush, I'd just go with that. Okay, quick second highlight here. Just kind of walking it up. Just a dab dab kind of thing nothing to stress over painting should not be stressful it should be relaxing it should make you feel good 
If it's stressful, maybe you're working a little bit too hard at it and then just sit back and have fun with it. Okay, while that dries, I want to put a highlight down the center of my candles. And I did that with get the right brush. Just a scruffy brush. Um, I have a, a stencil brush here. Oh, get it on camera. Stencil brush. It's a dome stencil brush. I believe this you can also buy on Patricia Rollins' website. I think she still carries this brush. This is a small one. Um, it's a royal brush, so maybe you could buy it from them. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do, I have a dry paper towel right here. I have my paint. Okay, I'm going to dip it into my coral blush. I've got quite a bit on my brush there. Okay, I'm going to go to my paper towel and I'm going to rub off all that paint. This is called dry rubbing. I'm going to rub it off to where there's not a whole lot left in that brush. Okay, then I'm going to come to my candles and I'm going to, with gentle pressure, I'm going to start rubbing down the center of each candle. You can see a highlight starting to form on there. I'm going to go with a little bit more pressure. Okay. I'm going to load a little bit more paint, rub it off on my paper towel. Do it again, because we did two up there. I want to do the same down here. Okay. Now up here I'm going to do a highlight of bleach sand. I think I'm going to use my 6 curved flat because I want this float to be a little bit smaller. I don't want it to stand out and smack me in the face too much. And if I remember rightly, I had to mix that bleach sand with some coral blush because that bleach sand was too stark. But I needed just one step lighter on there. down on the tips of each one of these little melted blobs. I'm going to go along, just kind of chisel edge the brush along the top. So I'm going to take my dry brush and I'm going to dip it into that bleach sand. Like that. <clears throat> Rub it off on my brush. It's a dirty brush, so it's going to mix with that color that I had previously on there, which is okay. We're going to start out with light pressure down the center. Light pressure. You can use a smaller, <clears throat> little scruffy brush if you want. Now I'm going to go get some more of that paint, rub it off. It's going to be a lot lighter on my brush this time, which is what I want, because I want to create a really bright little highlight in the center of these. And I'm just kind of tapping and then gently rubbing. I'm not putting very much paint on there at all. Um, then I'm going to take a liner brush. I have a 10-0 liner. It's a low corn hill. 10-0 liner. It's got the long, long tip on it, not the short. They make a 10-0 that has a shorter tip. Okay, I'm just going to get some bleach sand on there. A little bit of water in my brush. I'm just going to create a highlight. Oop, camera. There we go. A highlight along the edge here, down the center, straight down the center. Ok, 
good. And that's our highlighting on our canvas. Okay, so that part of the candles is done. That was quick, wasn't it? Quick and easy. Okay, we're going to work on our wicks next, uh, our flames. Clean this scruffy brush out a little bit. Okay, we're going to need um, country red on your palette, uh, cad yellow, a little bit of golden straw. We're going to mix the two, cad yellow and golden straw. And bleach sand. So let me put a little bit more bleach sand out here. I wanted to show you this uh, this opener that I have. This is just a um, bottle opener. This one was originally red. They come like this. They're plastic. Kind of see-through plastic. Um, this one was red. And I took it and I took just a a medium grit sandpaper and gently um, sanded it to give it some tooth. I put um, two coats of paint adhesion medium on it, let them dry in between. I sponged on my base coat with two colors of a blue and a white on the background. Painted my roses on there and did some stenciling on it. Um, and then when I got done, I put two coats of triple thick on it. This was really thick. You have to have a damp brush, you know, a pretty damp brush, and you have to move, move it on there quickly, and then get out of it. Once once it starts being like sticky, you've got to either go get some more water on your brush or move to a different place. If you get it on too thick, you'll have runs. But I love it. It um, gives such a shine. And I painted my glass case, which was this gold lam lam lamé color, to match it. They're not quite the exact same color because I painted this one first and then I painted this one several weeks later. But, um, it, it's fun to do. Um, you don't have to just paint on wood, paper, you know, things like that. Use your imagination. But I love to use these to open up my bottles because my thumb gets to hurting really bad. And they get this buildup in the top of them. And uh, that's from the paint bubbling up after you dump it out. There's still some up there and then the air catches it and it it just kind of forms up there in that. So some of them are harder to open than others. But if you get you know a big glob in there, like some of mine, that one doesn't. But it's got this glob in the lid. See there? I just take my um, opener for my paint can and I just pry it out from and around that and I just throw it in the trash. Because you want to make sure that your paint seals so no air gets in it. It's not, the paint is very affordable but you still don't want to have to be throwing it away. Okay so we are getting out white or bleach sand, cad yellow and country red and a little bit of golden straw if you still have that on your palette. Okay, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to take a round brush and go into my um, extender. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see the. Got a little bit of shadow coming from my light up there, so I hope that's not distracting. I just want to put a little bit, and I've got a lot on my brush there, so I want to brush that out a little bit in there. We also want to put a little bit of soft black out on our palette. For the wick, because we want to put the wick in there first. So, get some soft black out. Now, see, this is a good example of my bottle being all yucked up. As soon as I open that, it starts oozing up out of there. So, I'm just going to pull that off of there and throw it in the trash. 
Much better. We don't need very much black. Probably if I would tap them down, it wouldn't get all that up in there. But who wants to take the time to tap a bottle down every time they use it? Not me. Okay, we're going to use our liner brush, our 10 liner. And we're just going to get you on camera here. I'm going to try and keep my head out of the picture. I have a bad time of doing that, so if you see it, please forgive me. Like I said, I'm new to this video. So there's my wick. Okay, I'm going to use my curved curved flat brush to do my wicks. I get it the way that you can see it better. So I'm going to start at the top. I started at the bottom on my last one and the blending just was too bleach sand at the top. So just put some of that in there in each one of them. get some yellow. I'm going to put some golden straw in with my cad yellow because cad yellow is very transparent. So I'm going to dab that in next. Country. I'm not washing my brush in between. I'm just wiping, wiping it off. More country red down here. Bottom. I don't really know much about how fire is supposed to look. I have tried two times to create a birthday cake for my son that had flames on it. And both times it did not look anything like flames. So I'm just going to kind of dab and blend these together a little bit. Give that flame a little bit of movement. That extender in there gives you the time to do that. Okay. Now to create the... I've got a little spot here. Around the edge of this one, I have got to clean that up because that bugs me. I'm just taking a damp brush and kind of wiping at it. I think that one needs some bleach sand back in the very top of it. It's the very tip. I've lost my yellow. Seems like in that one. Candles, the flames are not the focal point, but I'm completely losing my yellow there. Probably have too much extender in that. Just a little bit. A little bit brighter. I want the wicks to have a little bit of, like they, like they have a little bit of movement to them. Okay, now the glow that is around the candles. I used a flat. Let me find my flat. Flat, flat, flat. In my, on my main piece, I used a 10. Um, I did have to reduce this by 20% to fit on my uh, pattern piece. And I was going to show you how I did that. I have this um, proportional scale. So I measured with my T-square how big or how tall. You, wanna, you only want to measure one way, either height or width, to, for your pattern to adjust it in size. So I measured how tall it was. It's, this is 4 inches, and that box was 5 inches. So I have this, which I bought at Hobby Lobby, 
and I've had it for a long time. I never used it. Actually, I forgot that I had it until I saw Patricia Rollinson using hers on her website. And I thought, ah, oh, I bought that like a couple of years ago. So I got it out so I could use it. So my original piece is five inches. So the inner circle is for your original piece size, your original pattern size, not, not necessarily the piece, but the pattern. And I want it to fit four inches. So I lined up the five and the four, and it shows 80% right there in the middle, in that window. So I know that my pattern is going to have to be 80% of the original, so it's a 20% reduction. So I went to my printer, and in the sizing I put 80%, put the original on there, and it reduced it 20%. That is the best way. I can't tell you how many years I spent wasting paper trying to make it the size that it needed to be to fit the piece that I wanted to paint it on. So, um, good tip. Hobby Lobby. Use your 40% off coupon. Good thing to buy. It's a must-have, I think. Alright, so we're going to do the glow around the candles. Um, I was going to show you this on a piece of scrap paper. But I'll just go for it. Okay, my flat brush. I dampened it because we need water in it. And I've got my water drops here if I need to get some more. And I'm only putting some some bleach sand on the toe. I'm working it in so it softens it. Not a whole lot, but I worked it in some. Okay, I want to make sure I have enough water in my brush. Not too much. I don't want it to thin it out. Then I start at the very top of my candle with my flame. And I just touch it down. Okay, and I just go all the way around. Creating my little glows of light rays coming off of that. It's just a touch down. Nothing fancy. Just touch it down. I'm going to work that paint across my brush just a little bit more. Hope I have you on camera here. Hope my head's not in the way. Apologize if it is. Okay, I always do the center one first. I don't know why, I just do. Oops, it's on camera. Sorry about that. I hope to get better at this. Sammy, my dog is snoring. Oh, she snores horribly. I have to kick her out of my paint room. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of that cad yellow and make a wash out of it. And it is just 90% water, 10% paint. I'll load my brush up and I'm just going to brush that around each one of these flames. I'll tap it with my finger so I don't want any harsh lines there. A little more paint than what I originally wanted, but that's okay. Fingers are good. Finger painting's good. Right, I want to put a little bit of this yellow down here in the candle. Just a little bit here and there. Give it some reflect reflective glow, I guess. Not that far. This one can have a little bit of glow on the side of it over here coming from that one. Okay, so our candles are done. So now I want you to go and transfer your holly leaves onto here and 
uh, just a line mark where the evergreen is going to go. You don't have to put the berries on right now. Just those two things. And then we'll go from there. Okay, we are going to base in our uh, holly leaves with evergreen. No, 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 no. That's not right. We're going to base in our pine needles with evergreen. So we're going to start them. We're going to do evergreen and then we're going to do olive green. We're going to use our liner brush and thin our paint down to an inky consistency. 10 O liner or any liner brush that you like. So I'm dipping my brush in paint I'm, or water. I'm bringing it over to my paint. I'm pulling some out and I am making it more like ink because the paint is just a little bit too thick to flow off the liner brush. When we go to the olive green we will have to do the same thing. So now I've got all this water in the ferrule of my brush and I don't want it in there so I'm going to roll the ferrule of my brush on there and then come back to my paint, roll it in my paint and pull it out. That gives me a nice tip on my brush. Okay, we're going to go in and do our pine needles. So we're just going to... I don't have any set way that I do my pine needles. I just kind of start putting them on. It's okay if you go over your, your holly leaves. Because these pine needles, we want to be back behind those holly leaves a little bit. Just do this all the way across. Make our center line. I know this is probably going to be upside down for you guys a little bit. I don't want my pine needles to look like feathers. But they're just kind of background to the holly, so they're not going to pop out as much as those holly leaves are going to pop out. But we kind of want the areas around the holly leaves to be pretty, you know, dense with paint, with the pine needles. So you just go all through here. Fill that in. My paint is getting too thick. It doesn't want to flow off of my brush, so I'm going to add some water to it. I'm constantly going back and picking up paint. It's better on these pine needles if you can do it going away from you. I'm keeping you on camera and not getting my head in the shot. All pine trees look different, so pine needles are not all going to be the same. Your vision of a pine needle could be completely different than my vision of a pine, me pine needle. So you just go with, with whatever. Okay. okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to put some olive green on top of those. This is really a pretty fast, fun little project. Um, you know, you can make it bigger and okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go down the center line. Get you on camera here. I am just doing more needles on top of the needles that I already did.
that one looks terrible. Let's move it a little bit more. Pine needles don't. Well, in my in my vision of pine needles, they don't tend to be straight, straight. They tend to have a little bit of curve on the end of them. Like I said, your vision of a pine needle will be perfectly fine for your piece. It does not have to look like mine. And I'm kind of rushing through these pine needles, not taking my time, because I want to be sure we get this get this completed for you. Okay, now we're going to base in the holly leaves with um, avocado. It'll take two coats. Then you're going to base in the berries with coral blush. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and go from there. Okay, so I've got my two coats on my holly leaves of avocado. I'm putting my second coat on my berries, just using a small round brush. I'm not really paying no attention to the pattern and the placement. You can place them wherever you want, as many as you want, the sizes that you want. I'm sure each one of mine will have a different amount of berries, a different amount of pine needles. Okay, we're going to shade on our leaves with evergreen. Now your leaves are your leaves. I, it's up to you which way you want to shade them. I tend to shade on the bottom and to the left normally have the light coming this way but we know that the light is coming directly at the candles because of the highlight in the center of the candles so I'm going to shade pretty much all of mine towards the bottom of the leaf wherever I think the bottom of the leaf is and this first shading is just going to be with straight evergreen when I come back and shade it again I'm going to add a tiny bit of soft black in there with it Because the evergreen can tend to be a little bit um, transparent so I like to make that just a, a little bit darker and the soft black will will give it that rich rich dark color that evergreen or that holly leaves have So just go along here and do every single one of your leaves. Okay, then we're going to highlight with olive green. Now, olive green always looks pretty bright when we first first highlight with it, but it as it dries, it kind of softens back. So don't be freaked out by the brightness of it. But we've got that direct light coming right on these leaves, so. You know, we got to brighten them up. And I forgot to shade this one, so I'm going to have to come back and shade this one. A bit, a bit heavy on the paint there.
do that again. You see how it's already faded down to where it's not quite as bright? Right now I want to go do the shading again with a little bit of soft black mixed in there. Dry my ferrule off because I've got water running down it. We're just going to deepen this. one here I never did shade. I'm just brush mixing. I have to highlight that one. A quick highlight. Let me highlight this one for the first time though. On each one of these, it's a little, a little bit brighter. Now we just want to do the vein down the center with a liner brush and evergreen. So you're going to thin your paint down, inky consistency, roll your brush through it. Get you on camera. Just going to pull the vein through each one. almost done with this. We've got to shade and highlight the berries and then put our border on. Um, the berries, I'm going to zoom you in on a couple of those berries so you can see them. We shaded on the bottom of the berries with antique maroon and then we highlighted with bleach sand and then I washed over them with the red, uh, country red. So we want a small little float on these. Starting on this side. So we're just going to float them on the bottom. I will probably do this twice. Go back and do a second time. Just intensify those berries. Really deepen them up. Now, it's up to you if you want to put a float of bleach sand across the top or if you just want to 
put a dot. Um, I dotted mine. Um, so I'm just going to put a little dot of bleach sand on there. Get my bleach sand starting to dry up over here. And then I'm going to wash over them with uh, country red. Which may dull down that shine mark a little bit, so we may have to put it back on. So, let's do a little wash of Country Red, which is 90% water, 10% paint, or glaze, whichever you want to, actually a wash is 80% water, 20% paint, and a glaze is 90% water and 10% paint. So I'm doing more of a glaze, so I'm just going to brush this on there. Make those berries a little redder. I think that just sets that off wonderfully. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do is the border. Now this is something that I can't wait to show you. It is a wonderful product. This gold trim that I put on here. Um, it's a product that I bought from Patricia Rawlinson. It is she, and you can buy sample sizes. These sizes that I have are just like little sample sizes. And they come in different colors. Silver, copper, bronze. Um, they're just metal powders. And they're real metal powders. So it doesn't, it takes one coat and you're good. Um, unlike metallic paints where you have to do two or three coats to get that and it has such amazing shine it's unbelievable so how we mix this powder is we take some of our varnish matte gloss whichever whatever you want to use is perfectly fine we put some down on our Scissors here. That's fun, really. We take our gold powders. We take our palette knife and we scoop some out. And we add it to our sealer, our varnish. And it just has such molten look to it. It is unbelievable. I'm close this back up because I don't want any moisture to get into that. Now, I just wiped my palette knife off on my paper towel. Look at that shine, even on a paper towel. You're going to love this stuff. You have got to get some. Okay, we've got that mixed up. So I'm going to take my finished coaster and I'm just taking some scotch tape. Plain old scotch tape. Nothing fancy. And you can mark off with a compass, an eighth of an inch I'd say. 
but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'll probably be crooked, but that's the way it goes. So we want to do two sides. Tape off two sides. Okay. Then we're going to take our makeup sponge. Now these makeup sponges are a wonderful investment. Um, I, I use them for a lot of things, for stenciling, so much you can use them for. Um, when I use them for paint or for this metallic, um, I, I lay the sponge down. When I'm done, I lay the sponge down on a piece of my palette paper. Just lay it down like that. And I let it dry. And then when it's dry, I come in and I just take my scissors and I cut the end of it off. And I use it until there's hardly anything left. So we're just going to dip into this. Get your own camera here. And we're just going to tap this on here along this edge. Because you want it on there. It is going to shine, shine. And we'll do this edge over here. Zoom it out so you can see it. I'm just tapping it on there. And the nice thing about this scotch tape, it comes off nice and clean. You want to pull towards the direction that you have painted. Throw that away. And pull this one off direction towards what you've painted. And we've got two sides done. And this dries very quickly. And I look at that, even my finger is nice and shiny. Um, we'll let it dry and then I will tape it and do the other two sides. Then, okay, one last thing I wanted to mention to you to, to uh, finish this up is to take your paint and add some water to it and make a little glaze over here. Really thin color of paint. Then I touch my paper towel and dab that excess water off and then I just glaze over my candles just with that that little wash of color. Try to stay out of your highlight if you can. And then the last thing to finish it up is to put some of that that uh, country red onto your leaves. You want to you want to have all the colors kind of go together. So I just touched a little bit of of red on a couple of the leaves kind of bring all that color together and that finishes the project up. Alright, so I've got it signed. Now I'm ready to put my sealer on it. Now this is the sealer I said at the beginning of the tape that I use. You can use any sealer that you want. This, this Americana is a good one to use. I just keep this on hand because I use it, I do a lot of large projects and I just like having it on hand. So you can see I haven't opened it for a little bit. Alright, so I've got my dowel rod. I've used almost all of it out of this can. So what I'm going to do is just gently stir it. That gets the um, the finish part that it sinks down to the bottom like this is a satin finish gets it stirred in nicely to the whole can okay there's not much in this can so it's not going to take much stirring you don't want to whip stir it because you don't want to create a lot of bubbles in there okay I'm just going to take an old brush and I'm going to dampen it I'm going to take my dowel rod I'm just going to wipe that off of the dowel rod. Don't want to waste any of it. 
You can take this and put it in, they make plastic containers that you can pour this into if you don't like dealing with cans and how they get kind of yucky on the top of them. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to brush on two coats. I may even do three since these are coasters. I'll do it one direction. So I'm doing this coat up and down. It will dry very quickly. I'll do the next coat across and if I decide to do a third coat I'll do it back on the up and down way. Okay, and you just, It's just water washable. You just rinse it out with all your other paint brushes. Okay, and then for the cork on the back, I bought this big roll of cork at um, Michael's. I've just about used it all. It, it, it comes in a really long roll, but this is all that I have left of it because I do coasters a lot and I've done placemats where I've used this on the back of placemats as well. So I just laid it out. I laid my coaster on it and I drew around it with a pen or a pencil, whatever. I, I usually use a pen because I can see the lines really good to cut it out. Okay, now when you're tracing around something, it will make the pattern a little bit bigger when you go to cut it because you're going around the outside perimeter of that coaster. So you want to cut just inside of the line that you drew. Don't cut on the outside of it. Try and cut on the inside of that line. And then this is adhesive, so you just peel it off. Well, maybe you peel it off. I just kind of broke my cork there. That's not good. I'll try not to do that. My cork is getting down to the end of the roll, so it's got some wrinkles in it. Now it's easier for me to do it this way. So I'm just going to line my cork up. You can just peel back a small amount at first if you want and then get it positioned on there and then peel the rest of it off and just lay it down on there. And there you've got a nice coaster. I got mine a little crooked on there so I'm going to take my exacto uh, knife and just lay it on a cutting mat and trim that that is hanging over right there. It's not a big deal. But it's a nice good solid coaster and uh, put them in your box that you painted to match and you've got a wonderful wedding gift, Christmas gift. Um, you, can, you can paint them to match anyone's uh, decor in their home. So I hope that you try this project out and I'll see you next time. Thanks.